this video, I want to talk about some basic concepts with playing the concert bass drum. Concert bass drums come in a variety of sizes, anywhere from about 24 or 26 inches at the smallest level all the way up to 40 inches and sometimes larger. Um, sometimes the drum is laid all the way on its side. Very, uh, pretty unusual, but it ha does happen occasionally. Um, most of the time the drums are set up in frames that can tilt and then sometimes you have to play the drum vertically. Um, when we approach the concert bass drum, we don't want the heads to face the audience. And so you probably fairly typically you've seen in your program um, that the concert bass drum faces this way, uh, you know, sort of uh, perpendicular to the audience. When we play the bass drum, we actually want to stand behind the instrument so that we have the instrument and our music stand and the conductor all in one single line of sight. And we've talked about that with some other instruments as well. So if I'm playing the concert bass drum, I'm not standing right here in front of the drum and then playing it this way. You'll notice here that I have my beaters on a trap table with a towel in front of the instrument. Um, I do have a stick bag up here on the top for storage. But by and large, you don't want to default to leaving, leaving mallets up here on the top of the drum where they can make noise or, or as more commonly is going to happen, they're going to fall off. Um, so have your, have your implements arrayed in front of you where you can get at them easily. So I have a, a sort of standard general beater here, and then I have a pair of rollers, and we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Um, when you play the concert bass drum, you're going to use a little bit less, you're not going to use the same technique you use for snare drum because the beater is so much larger and so much heavier. Um, so you're going to keep your wrist a little bit more firm, not rigid, but a little bit more firm, and a lot more of the stroke is going to come from your upper arm. So I'll stand behind the instrument here. I'll place my upper hand on top of the instrument to muffle it. We'll talk about muffling in just a minute. The striking place for the drum, the beating spot, is not in the center of the drum unless you have a very articulate note. You want to get the uh, most ring and tone out of the drum, and so we're going to strike about six inches off center. It's not really one third, it's not really two thirds away from the edge, because, and of course the drums are different sizes. You don't want to strike down here at the edge because you'll get a very thin tone. Get a lot of you won't get a lot of bass there because you're so near the edge. You don't want to strike dead center unless you're playing very articulately. Sort of get that impact at the front of the tone. But if we scoot down six inches, and we can play either with a direct blow or with a little bit of a glancing blow, you see, think about making the letter J. Then we'll get the most tone out of the drum. So we'll scoot down just a little bit, and then. nice full sound out of the drum. If I want a little bit less attack, then I can do a glancing blow. Doesn't really matter if you go up or down for that. Direct. Get a little more attack. Right? And again, about six inches off center so that we get the full tone of the drum. My upper hand is going to be used to mute the drum, but what will happen here, and this, may, and this may especially happen in something like a march where you have a lot of quarter notes, what you're going to hear here is that you're going to hear the impact of my hand on the drum. Right, you can, you can hear that. And it's just like timpani technique where the, the idea is to stop the head from moving, but in this case, we're actually putting so much hand on the head that we're creating its own sound. We don't want that a lot of the time, so what you should also have handy is another towel or some other muting, uh, muting material that can be placed on the drum and then you can mute the drum without, uh, without making any noise. Also leave the mute on if you if you have uh, something like a long note that has a staccato note on it, and it makes the note a little bit shorter, etc. 
There is a uh, there is a method of muting that some players use where they put a chair here in front of them and then will put their leg up on the chair and then mute the drum with their knee and that will that may give them a second hand free. I have never found that technique to be particularly effective, um, so I don't do it. Um, any muting I need to do, I always just do with a towel and with my two hands. But you will see some players that have a, 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 a chair or a footstool um, to mute the drum with their, their knee. I just never found the, uh, the technique particularly effective. If you have a hard articulate note at a high volume, you can hit dead center if you need the attack of that sound. Otherwise, you sort of go in the normal playing area. something even more articulate we'll go dead center if you have a large drum it may be necessary if you have a short note especially like at the end of a piece it may be necessary to strike the drum and mute it with your front hand and also mute it with your back hand so that the uh, the head on the back of the drum stops ringing as well so I'll, I'll do an example of that here so And that'll stop the vibrations of the drum uh, just a little bit quicker. Um, like cymbals and most other accessory instruments, the uh, duration of notes on the bass drum is very rarely accurately uh, depicted in the notation. So it will be up to you to know the context of the part, know what other instruments are playing complementary parts, um, and tailor the duration of notes um, to match what's going on around you in the ensemble. Um, the final thing we'll talk about is bass drum rolls. Um, typically, you're going to play with a smaller set of dedicated beaters called rollers. So you can see here the size difference between the general beater and one of the rollers. Typically, if you have some sort of mute on, you're going to unmute because you want this, the drum to make its full, uh, make its full sound here. Um, there are two ways that you can grip the, uh, grip the mallets um, on the lower hand. You grip it match grip, just like you're playing snare drum or concert bass drum. And then, uh, depending on your technique and uh, what your instrument is capable of doing, you can either play matched grip or you can flip uh, one hand over and play traditional grip. Since I'm left-handed and I happen to be standing in the drum this way, I can actually hold the typical left-hand traditional grip. But I've also played uh, sort of backwards traditional when the drum is turned around as well. Now, when you roll on the drum, like the suspended cymbal, you do not want to roll in one spot. You want the mallets to get away from each other so that you activate as much of the drum as possible. I see students all the time that play bass drum rolls right here. And they get sort of get a very hard, articulate sound. We want a nice, big wash of sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to play about a hand length, or maybe about six, six to eight inches, away from the edges, not away from the center, all the way to the edges. Right, not all the way to the edges again because you don't want to get that thin sound. But if we scoot in about eight inches and then it's a slow single stroke roll, I'll show you that in just a second. Then we get a nice full sound out of the drum. As I said, it's a single stroke roll and you don't have to roll quickly. I'm gonna turn the mallets over so you can hear how slowly I'm actually playing. Right, so it's a very, it's a very slow uh, hand speed. Six to eight inches off center. Nice, easy grip on the sticks. Nice and relaxed. You don't have to pound the sound into the drum. Let the drum make the sound come off and then if you have a crescendo that maybe ends with a hard accented note then you can speed up your hands and move the sticks into the center for the end of uh, for the end of that flourish I'll sort of I'll demonstrate a roll and then I'll show you that here All right so maybe you run into a technique like that Okay, so that's a little bit about uh, the techniques and concepts for approaching the concert bass drum.